Hello everyone, my name is Iris Franz. Today we're going to talk about monopsony in the labor market and minimum wage. So from your principles of microeconomics or macroeconomics, you learn that in a competitive labor market, minimum wage law in general is a bad thing. Why is that? Because if you have a minimum wage that is higher than the competitive wage, then that's going to cause the labor supply to be higher than labor demanded. And therefore, you are going to have an unemployment. Now, the picture is going to change if we have monopsony. So we know that monopsony is the only buyer in the labor market. So in that case, a minimum wage is actually a good thing. We're going to see why. So suppose there's no minimum wage, there's no government regulation, and no labor union. So the monopsony can do whatever they want. Now, the demand of this monopsony will be equal to the marginal revenue product, meaning that's a value that the worker provides to the company. So that's also equal to the price of the product that the company sells times the productivity of the labor. So we're assuming that we only hire laborers or no other um, capital or other things. So for example, if in an hour you as a worker, if you can hire, uh, you can produce 30 products and each product is sold for $2, then you're providing two times 30, $60 for the company. So the demand curve um, reflects the value the workers provide to the company. Now, also the company is a monopsony, so it alone faces the supply curve of the labor in the market. So that's the supply curve. And the marginal cost curve is going to sit above the supply curve. So how is that? Suppose you're in a monopsony, then if you hire one worker, you pay a low wage, like that. But if you want to hire two workers, then you have to increase the wage. Not just the wage of the additional worker, but also the wage of the previous worker. And therefore, your marginal cost is going to be higher than your supply curve. So how would this um, monopsony hire so we first equate the marginal cost and the marginal benefit. So that will be the marginal revenue product, the value workers provide to the company. So that's the marginal revenue product and marginal cost. At the intersection, the monopsony will decide how many workers it is going to hire. So you move down, you look, it's LM. So the monopsony is going to hire LM workers. And how much will they pay for the workers? They will go back to the supply curve and hey, the wage is WN. So um, they will be paying a wage that is lower than the value the worker provides to the company. And notice that compared to a competitive market where we have many employers and many employees, the competitive wage will be WC, that's where demand and supply intersects, and uh, um, the employment will be LC, so LC people will be hired. So you can see that under monopsony, the wage is lower than competitive wage, and also the number of workers hired will be less than a competitive uh, market. And therefore, you can see there is a deadweight loss here. So that, in general, that's a bad thing. So suppose we have a government coming in and say, hey, uh, paying such a low wage is unfair. You have to pay a minimum wage that is a competitive level at WC. So in that case, they change the picture of the monopsony. Because now, if you have to pay WC at each worker, doesn't matter how many workers you hire, doesn't matter how few workers you hire, you have to pay WC. Then that becomes a new marginal cost. And the monopsony will equate marginal cost and marginal benefit. So where is it? That's a demand, that's a marginal benefit, and that's a marginal cost. So we pay this and we hire this number of worker LC. So you can see that when you have a monopsony, minimum wage law is actually a good thing. First of all, it increases employment from LM to LC. Second of all, the increase the wage of these workers from WM to WC. These are usually unskilled laborers. And also, you take care of the deadweight loss. So that reduces the deadweight loss from this triangle to nothing. And therefore, is minimum wage a bad thing? Well, it depends on the situation. If you have a perfectly competitive market, 
and you set a minimum wage that is binding, meaning it's higher than competitive wage, then yes, it's a bad thing. However, if you are in a market of monopsony, minimum wage law is actually a good thing. It helps a worker, it improves the employment, and it reduces the daily loss. So I hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.